Well, it's looking like the pay-per-view fight between Javante Tank Davis and Leo Santa Cruz may end up at the Staples Center. We got to check this out. What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang, gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Venmo donations, the Cash app, and the Patreon family. Sign up for ESPN Plus below using my link. It definitely helps the channel. Now, Lance Pugmire of The Athletic, he released this tweet. He says, I am told that the targeted venue for the big... Javante Davis, Leo Santa Cruz showdown is the Staples Center, in his opinion, was a great choice. I heard they're looking at T-Mobile Arena as well. Both would be good locations. Staples Center would be massive. Rest in peace to everyone that lost their life, and uh, including the legend Kobe Bryant. The Lakers, right now, I think a lot of people are just kind of paying respects, and the Lakers are the trending team. I like what the Staples Center, they put Kobe jerseys 8-24 all throughout the facility and the seats and you know it'd be an honor for leo santa cruz from la who's from la and tank davis to fight in a, a venue like that and i think it would be big and i will hopefully they they would use the opportunity to pay some homage to the people that uh, passed in that crash now um other than that it's just that i've been there wilder fury was there the first one and also mikey garcia was lit versus Robert Easter. That's another, these are just a couple of the fights that I've seen at the Staples Center. So there's a lot of great ones. They had Leo Santa Cruz, Abner Mata's one and two there. Leo Santa Cruz is from SoCal. So it's a natural fit. And it actually, that would be, that'd be interesting because Tank would be the A side in this equation as far as I'm concerned. And he would be giving the crowd advantage probably to Leo Santa Cruz because he's from that area. So it's going to be easier for his people to travel out than you know Baltimore people but you know I'm not saying no one's going to travel out from Baltimore but it's, all, it's not everyone can afford it or swing it or take so much time off work or whatever versus a quick drive 20 minutes oh actually LA traffic an hour and 40 minutes <laughs> to get 15 minutes something that should take you 15 minutes but that's another story LA traffic is crazy so my thoughts listen I've already heard about the fight I told you guys like way before the information was made available um i heard through sources that they this was the fight they were trying to build up so this is well before either of their last couple of fights you know this was a fight that they've been thinking about and brewing leo santa cruz also stated that he's not afraid of nobody you know he said in his last fight miguel flores he's like yeah i will, I will move up to a fight i i will fight tank he, he's he, he's a good fighter and uh i just to show i i'm not afraid of in, anybody i'll fight anybody you know, he said something to that effect. Um, dangerous move because Leo Santa Cruz, in my opinion, moved up. Didn't look great versus Miguel Flores. However, Styles make fights and Leo Santa Cruz admits that something was off. He said he just, uh, he said he was, I think, I forgot what he said. I think he might have said he was sick. He was, he was pretty bad, sick or something. And he was just getting over it, but he didn't want to make a bunch of excuses. He said, it is what it is. I got the victory and, you know, we'll build from that. But he didn't look so, you know, it wasn't his best performance. You normally see him throw a, a lot of punches. But I feel like guys like Javante Tank Davis with his star power, with his regular power, not just star power, but his actual God-given power that he hits you with, people are going to be in there up and up. And we've seen this in boxing. Like Rosario, he got stopped before. But when it counted against Julian J. Rock Williams, he upset Julian J. Rock Williams. We've seen Joe Smith Jr. lose to like guys like Bevel, but then he just beat Jesse Hart, you know? And we've seen recently a lot of these types of situations where guys have had bad performances, and then when they fought the more known commodity, they step it up. I think another, if you know your boxing, another recent example would be Mean Machine that fought Terrence Crawford. He looked good against a great fighter in Crawford, but his fight right before that was with Ray Robinson, and he didn't look so good. And, I, and, you know, I really thought he lost the fight. So styles make fights. And a lot of these guys, when they know they're fighting the bigger name, they really prepare for it because they want to capture and and take that energy from you and, you know, put it towards their movement. And, 
you know, get bigger paychecks by beating you in the victory and the belt. Tank just got a belt beating Gamboa, etc. Tank is a bona fide star. I've seen this firsthand. I went to his last couple of fights. I was in Baltimore for his mandatory fight with Ricardo Nunez. I went to his last fight in Atlanta. It was lit. Shaquille O'Neal was there. You know, legendary basketball player, Magic, Lakers, Heat, actor, announcer, commentator, right? A ton of people. Steven Jackson, a lot of rappers, Lil Baby, Lil Kim. Um, I seen Puff's son, Justin. Just a lot of people were there, bro. Other boxers, Danny Jacobs, Clarissa Shields, etc. Tank, he brings him out, bro. He brings him out. So no doubt this would be a big fight. And, you know, I know old media, they want to hate so bad. So they're going to say, oh, why is, why would he fight him? Because this is what old media does. A lot of times fight, like some of these dudes in old media are racist. So if they don't like the black fighter, then if they favor him to win, what they'll do is act like they don't want to see the fight because they don't like the other person that they do like. They don't like their chances in the fight. Leo Santa Cruz can fight. You know, we've seen that. He only lost to who? Carl Frampton? We've seen he can fight, but some of the um, racist fans and some of the old media fans, they'll try to make it like because it's going to be a huge risk because Leo Santa Cruz, he's going in there with the puncher. But I like the stylistic matchup. Yeah, Tank can punch, but some of these same people said he didn't look good. I didn't think this, but a lot of the people in the comment section from old media said that he looked poor versus Gamboa. So this makes it a good fight. Another reason is the timing. Tank just moved to this division. So I understand that Leo Santa Cruz hasn't fought at 135 yet. And he just moved up to the previous division. But he's bigger than Tank. I've been around both of them. Tank is definitely shorter than Leo Santa Cruz. And if both guys prepare for each other, then it's going to be a good fight. Because Leo Santa Cruz, at his best, he's a volume puncher. And some people question if Tank had stamina issues his last fight. If and Leo Santa Cruz has, has been very durable, I don't know who knocked him down. I think Frampton almost knocked him down, but I don't think he was like stumbled, like staggered back, but I don't think he went down. So he's he's a durable guy, and we know Tank has power that you have to really be cautious of. But it's just all around a good fight volume puncher, an aggressive combination puncher versus an explosive boxer puncher with that uses his offense beautifully and has speed advantage. Leo would have the volume advantage, the height advantage, probably the longer arms being the taller person, things of this sort. So it's actually a great fight, and that's a great market. I actually prefer it at the Staples Center instead of T-Mobile, but I would be willing to travel to either. It's just a good fight. Known guys, known variables. And let your boy Ego tell you another thing that's great about this fight that people... We just like to nip stuff in the bud before old media comes in and tries to... You know, these are the same, a lot of the same people that support Jake Paul and Logan Paul fighting on DAZN or some of these DAZN matches like Chavez Jr. getting an opportunity with Jacobs and these other fights and then have so much to say when Tank fights Gamboa or a fight like, this. oh, he hasn't, he hasn't fought at 135. Why is he fighting Leo? Keep this in mind. Leo Santa Cruz beat Abnomatis twice and we were all excited to see Tank versus Abnomatis. So if we were excited to see Tank versus Abnomatis, why wouldn't we be excited to see Tank versus the guy that beat Abnomatis twice? Those are facts, and you can't argue those. New media, love everybody. 2020, Mamba mentality, we working. Great fight. If they get it done at that location, that's a great summer fight, a great venue. Rest in peace to number 24, number 8, Kobe Bryant, Black Mamba. And like I said, I'm sure uh, it looked like Tank having a daughter. Uh, it looked like he was really moved by the, the Kobe situation, and he was he was doing a lot of like dedication condolences posts. And he's he's from a rough area. He's from Baltimore, so he knows about losing people that are close to him and stuff like that. Plus, he has the father daughter dynamic, so I'm sure he would be honored to to play in the Lakers, um, or to fight in the Lakers venue. You know, especially in light of everything that's recently happened. So that would be a good, if they can make a play for that and get it. I don't know what this does for the zone. I think it hurts. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because they're talking about this fight happening in May. They're also talking about Canelo fighting in late May in Japan, possibly. 
against a lesser name, Ryota Mirada. It's like they, if this if this goes down and you have Tank versus Leo Santa Cruz, another Mexican fighter, Mexican American, and Tank fighting on a pay per view because everything looks like this is growing legs. I've heard about the that they were trying to build to the Tank and Leo Santa Cruz. Leonard Ellerby said that Tank will be fighting um, on pay per view next. He said that after Atlanta. And Tank said that he's fighting on pay-per-view and his fight date's coming soon. So it looks like this is going to go down. But the bad thing for, like I said, for DAZN, Canelo said he wanted the Mexican dates, right? And for the third year, he's been pushed off the date for failing with Clint Buterol. His team couldn't organize a Kovalev fight by September, Mexican Independence Day weekend. And then now you let a, a up-and-coming star like Tank and then Leo Santa Cruz fight push your fight back and then fight in japan i just don't see that's that's crazy that's crazy because canelo was the face of boxing he was the go-to guy and now you're seeing these other people tank ain't even fought and he hasn't even fought on um pay-per-view yet and he would be involved in a bigger may fight than canelo that's insane but sign of the times they've mayweather promotion shout out to them they've done an excellent job moving tank tank and his family in baltimore his coaches They've done a great job because they really moved and branded the kid. Tank has branded himself and made himself. I told you guys, we control the narrative, new media. Tank is the culture, takes part of the culture. That's why you see the Shade Room, Baller Alert, World Star. They all mess with him and all post when he does certain things or has breakups or gets with somebody. And it's making him bigger and bigger because now he's, he's reaching that, you know, baby Floyd status where he's like becoming super household and the zone a company like that is like they're pulling people out of the american market or possibly putting them in the american market like triple g versus says meta i don't see how you compete with fights that are big like this and branded like this like i said it was mikey garcia versus robert easter the stable center was packed lee i remember luis ortiz was on the undercard he got a standing ovation because he was just coming off the wilder performance right that was a big fight. Ask anyone that covered that fight or any fans that were there at Mikey Garcia, Robert Easter. To me, this is bigger because Leo Santa Cruz is big as well as Tank is a superstar. So, you know, this would be a bigger fight. And I hope they load up the card, take advantage of it. That's one thing I would like to see for, for uh, PBC is just, you know, make some real good undercard fights. Because like Wilder's last two pay-per-views, I feel like his undercards are like cool, but I feel like they can put on some like guaranteed barn burner fights but that's just my opinion um i like the fight stylistically it makes a lot of sense it makes a lot of money so that like makes a lot of sense bars let's get it if you love what i'm doing smash the like button as always hate comment and subscribe to the next video is ego signing off we unpack we unpack we unpack coming to your live boxing ego unpack yeah We unpack. We unpack.